Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning all about the longship. First let's introduce the longship. This is a glorious beast, although learning to steer it is a lot more problematic than the carve that you're used to. The longship's special because unlike the carve, it has a ladder on both sides of the ship. So no more drowning because you went to the wrong side of the boat. That's a thing of the past. And not only two ladders, but you get some stools. And what's that? Two more stools. That's right. Your longship comes with four stools. Not three, not two, four stools. And then the best part, oh, the storage space in this baby. Look at this. Eh, uh, this is just chump change, really, because the true glory of the longship is filling it up with carts. Now, just like the carve and the raft, the longship has a rudder, and you go get near it and click use, and then you can steer the boat. The boats all have the same controls. And this is the nuance that most people struggle to grasp with boats. Your boat is always traveling in arcs. It doesn't go forwards or backwards. It's always sort of making these curves. It's really important that you understand this because the main problem people have when they're piloting these longships is they don't realize that in order to turn right, you have to turn left. In order to turn left, the whole boat in the back goes to the right. And you see now I'm beached on the shore. And this is exactly what's gonna happen to you because boats don't travel in straight lines. They travel in arcs. And anytime you're turning to the left, you actually need space on your right. Otherwise you'll get beached. It's kind of like driving a truck. A truck has to turn left a bit to turn right. So they have enough space. It's the same thing with the longship. But now that we're in this situation, well, we got to get out of it. You can use full turns to rotate the ship, right? So normally people would just go, try and go forwards or backwards. But if I set the ship to be backwards here, nothing's happening, right? It's stuck. But if I turn it all the way, the ship starts to rotate and then try and back up and you'll find that you're able to. In general, it's the back part of the ship and the middle that get it stuck. The front isn't usually the cause of the problem. So if you can get the back of the ship out of the land, then you'll be fine. And that rotating trick you just saw me use is one of the best ways to do it. Now, the most important thing to keep in mind when you're sailing is your situational awareness. So there's two things here. One, daylight, and two, your sail. You really shouldn't sail at full speed unless you know absolutely certainly where you're going. Look at the difference in visibility right now between this and that. It's much easier to crash and you'll find that at full speed, you sort of have to corner around and you, it's harder to know where you're going. You're gonna wanna go as fast as possible. What's the sense in going as fast as possible if all that happens is you crash into the bank, get killed by a mosquito, and then you're lost at your spawn point without a boat? Also, you really must respect the weather conditions. Sometimes you're gonna need to stop. If you keep sailing, you're gonna crash. Right now, for example, that looks pretty clear, doesn't it? I mean, the river's very obviously right there. There's trees, we know exactly where to go. That's only because it's daylight. Uh, what about now? How do you feel about the clarity of the river that we're sailing on and the imminency of our death? Can you see where you're going? Because I can't at all. And in this situation, the best thing to do is literally to just wait. Because otherwise, you're going to crash. You may think that you're going to sail into the right place, but you're not. You're going to turn, go into the bank, and then get killed by something. So don't do it. Just wait and be patient. Even the difference between daytime and nighttime is really extreme. I mean, this is some unfavorable misty conditions you can see, right? But since it's the daytime, you can still sort of see the water. But it's obvious how much this impacts your visibility. And this determines your success as a sailor with the longship. Are you able to stay aware of your situation? 
or are you going to just think everything's fine and then sail your whole pack of friends into an untimely death? So far, our sailing experience in this video has been entirely with motor, but you will not be so lucky in actual Valheim. You'll almost always find that the wind is sort of going against you. The boat has three forward speeds. There's one, which is just using the oar. There's having the sail half down. And then there's three, which is having the sail down all the way. You need to get to that mountain right ahead of us, right? But the wind is going the exact opposite direction and you have to sail against the wind. In that case, you can have your sails down, but the boat won't really move. It's abysmally slow. So it's actually faster to use the oar, to use speed one. If you're going against the wind, use speed one, and your boat will gain some momentum and eventually move at a decent pace. When you're trying to catch the wind, it's also really useful to use that same trick I showed you earlier to get out of the sandbank. You put forward or backward one gear and then turn all the way, which will allow your boat to rotate until you get a better angle with the wind. Most of the time, you won't have the wind at your back. You're gonna be navigating the wind. Luckily, the wind doesn't need to be totally at your back. You can just have the wind sort of be going halfway and that's gonna be good enough. As you can see, we don't have the wind totally against our back, but our boat's able to maintain a pretty decent speed here. What's interesting about the boats is they don't get slowed down when you put stuff in their storage. So you could fill this with like 5,000 pounds of metal and it wouldn't change the boat's behavior or its physics in any way. However, once you start loading the boat up with carts, the game totally changes and the boat can become so slow that it can't even outrun a death skeeto. Watching this video and learning these tips is all great, but really what you need to do is get comfortable sailing the boat. And what's a fun way to do that? That's where these beautiful, glorious plains rivers come in. And I hear you, you might be saying, but that's the plains. Believe it or not, the plains is easier to sail in than the Black Forest. Yeah, sure, the Black Forest's not as dangerous as the plains monster-wise, but you see all those rocks? The Black Forest is the worst place to sail. Trust me, you do not want to be there. There's going to be rocks under the water, your boat's going to get stuck, you're going to make a loud noise mining the rocks out, and then a troll's going to gank you. You don't want that. That's why you want these nice, smooth, easy, rockless plains. You see those rocks? They're tiny, barely a problem for your boat. But this, ugh, it's absolute nonsense. You see all this nonsense? You don't want this. As crazy as it may sound, one of the best, most thrilling, and most enjoyable places to sail is down Plains Rivers. The most basic precaution is to have a bow and arrows because of Deathskeeto, but really you should also have a root harness because then you'll actually survive an attack and you'll probably be fine. Aside from that, your main precaution, as always with sailing, is situational awareness. While it's true that in general, the plains is much easier to sail in than the Black Forest, that doesn't mean that the plains isn't without its dangers. The main danger of the plains is this. Let's call them sandbars. In the nighttime or in the mist, you're gonna crash into these and you're gonna beat your boat and then you're gonna get killed by goblins. And you don't want that. When you're in the plains, you learn to treat these reeds as danger. That's like, ah, crap. That's how you know there might be low land there. Now, whenever you are sailing in the plains, it's good to take little breaks and look over the edge of the boat. Because when you're looking at an angle, the sky sort of reflects on the water. So you don't see what's underneath the water. So when you look up, you can see more clearly where the sandbars are because sailing in the plains is all about avoiding the sandbars, right? But as I mentioned, in general, as long as you take these precautions, sailing down rivers in the plains is actually quite smooth and enjoyable. Just make sure that you stay in the middle of the river. Pay attention if it gets really narrow I really love sailing in Plains Rivers. It's probably my favorite part of the sailing experience in Valheim. 
rivers, and all the other rivers have so many rocks. But Plains Rivers don't really have rocks in them, so you can just sail through the river. And it's really fun just watching all the violence and the goblins and the death skeetos pass you by. Speaking of getting killed, the easiest way to get killed is to get too close to the shoreline. So while it's fun to sail in rivers in the plains, you really need to pay attention to those sandbars and shoreline. And this is pretty much as close as you ever want to get to the shore. Don't get any closer than this because it's going to be hard for you to turn your boat and you might beach it on a sandbar or something like that. Another reason that you really don't want to get too close to the edges here is because of turning. As you saw earlier, if you sail parallel to the shore and you try and turn, the back of your boat will get you stuck in the shoreline. Yet another reason that you want to stay in the middle of the river, stay in the deepest part. Another awesome thing about sailing the longship is once you put the sail up and you're in your ocean and you got your trajectory down, you can actually just go sit at the front on that handy dandy stool from earlier. And this is kind of cool because then you can get in front of the sail and look and see the pretty views. I like to do this. It's thrilling knowing that nobody's controlling the boat and something terrible could happen. Now that you know all about situational awareness, staying alive when sailing, and the basic controls of the boat, you can learn more about the longship's true potential, which is moving large amounts of goods. The longship is incredible because you can actually put carts into it. Watch this. Loading the carts up is really simple. You just need to get them situated. But all you have to do to load the carts is put the boat close to the land and I like to just use two, something simple. You need the ground in front of the stairs to be flat. See how it's sloped right now? That's breaking this sort of system here. So let's flatten it out. And then we should be able to pick the cart up and then just simply push it forward up onto the boat, just like this. And then run forward and there we are. Usually it kind of goes all crazy at first, and it's usually best to have one on each side of the mast. So there we have it. We have our two carts loaded into the boat. As you can tell, you could fit way more than two, but I recommend if you're just starting out, don't be too excessive. Now, it might look sketchy having these carts here, but watch. They actually stay on the boat really well, especially in single player. You seeing this? We're in the storm, boat's all here, yet the carts are just chilling. They do a really good job of sticking to the longship. And I've had a lot of fun filling the longship up with metal and the carts, because this way you can get so much more metal. When you just use the longship, you're limited to 18 stacks, plus whatever you can put in your inventory. But each cart that you stash on your boat gives you another 18 stacks. So you can hugely expand the inventory of the longship this way. Another great feature about using the carts is that they are actually repairable, unlike cargo crates. Cargo crates are really fragile and they'll break just from sailing. Whereas carts are repairable with a workbench. So whenever you stop to repair your boat, you can also repair your carts. Now, you can see that these carts are like glue, but that's just because I'm on single player. If you have another person around you, then the game doesn't do a good of a job as remembering where the carts are. Great workaround is to actually have each player be on their own longship. I found that that works well. You can have a couple carts on each longship. As long as there's only one, it won't have too many problems. And that's it for this video, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed this sailing video, and I encourage you to check out some Plains Rivers just for the sake of speeding down them. It's really, really fun. And as always, if you want to support my work, then please consider purchasing your own dedicated Valheim server. It is a great way to play Valheim, especially if you know one or two other people who like the game as much as you do. Consider checking out Hilda's request and setting up your own dedicated server with some of the custom difficulty settings that are available. If you want to try a mode where you don't have any portals, or a mode where you can take metal through portals, 
Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Comment below if there's something you would like me to make a tutorial about, and also vote in the polls to see what the next video is going to be. I usually put the next like five or six things I'm thinking about, and then I'll make the two or three that get the most votes. So what you guys vote on will sort of determine what gets made. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.